So there's this wild story unfolding about a guy by the name of John Paul Miller, who's actually a pastor in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Now, the reason why this story sticks out to me so much is because I'm in Myrtle Beach all the time. I was just there a couple of weeks ago. I plan on going back in a few weeks. I have friends in the area who are familiar with the situation. They don't know this guy personally, but they know of him. And let's just say that allegedly talk around the town is that this guy is a shady guy. There's been talk around the town about this guy for a while, allegedly. And from what I'm hearing, he also has a passionate group of followers. I don't want to call it a cult, but you know he's a pastor at a church. And he has a group of people who passionately follow him. And they view him as someone who can do no wrong. Let's just say that. Well, it just so happens that his wife, Micah, was recently found dead. Now, they're saying that it may be, um, you know, she ended herself. Let's just say that, that it may be a self-deletion. But her family doesn't believe that at all. I don't really believe it at all. The people in Myrtle Beach don't really believe it at all. And as I look around the internet, I don't think the internet is buying that either. I think everyone thinks that there's something weird or there's something more to the story. And the reason people feel that way is because hours after this woman died, hours after whatever happened to her happened to her, her husband, John Paul, the pastor, was at church giving a sermon, and in the middle of his sermon, there's this really awkward moment. There's this really awkward speech. It has to be one of the most awkward things I've seen in all of my days on this earth. And he just nonchalantly, almost like if you've ever seen a TV preacher or, or a TV pastor, they have this way of talking this artificial, generic, non-genuine way of talking. Yeah, he delivers this information hours after his wife is, uh, we don't know what happened to her. We know she's no longer with us, okay? Hours after that happened, he sits here and he tells the church what just happened. And the tone of his voice just the way that he talks, it does not sit right with me. It does not sit right with my spirit. It does not sit right with my soul. I cannot properly describe how it makes me feel. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the clip. And you let me know how it makes you feel in the comments below. And then after this clip, I'll be right back with more thoughts. But the way they do it 300 years now, they just do this. Their phone rings and they just put up their ear. What is it? And it's the... It's the answer to their miracle. Whatever the, the, the results to the test came back. We were so sorry. We, we got it wrong. You don't have cancer. Or, or the, the, the lottery. You just won the lottery. Whatever it is. Come through. And your relative says, God, this is amazing. Why would you do this for me? And God says, I love you. But I didn't do this for you. You see, 300 years ago, your great, 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 great grandparents we're listening to this tall, charming, <laughs> humble <laughs> pastor. And he told them that if they'll give their life to Christ, that God won't just take care of them. He'll take care of the ones that come after him. And so I love you, but I didn't heal you for your sake. I did it because the promise I made to them 300 years ago. That's what I want you to leave here with. Okay, that's, amen. We're not going to do an altar call today. Instead, um, instead, um, I'm going to have you stand up, and I'm going to make an announcement. And um, after the announcement, I'm going to ask that you um, you leave church quietly and, and don't talk about the announcement here in the building, please, if you can. So y'all can stand to your feet. Um, 
before I make the announcement, I also want to say that um, my request to you is that you will continue to come to church and serve and give um, for the next you know little bit. Cause I don't want to have. I'm taking a little bit of a break, and I don't want to have to worry about the church. My break may be a few days, a few weeks. I don't know. Um, I got a call late last night. My wife has passed away. And yeah, and it was uh, it was self-induced, and it was uh, up in North Carolina. And um, we're gonna have a funeral for her next Sunday here at 3 p.m. And so um, it's, it's all I can. Yeah, I'm I'm just kind of going on um, adrenaline right now. So y'all pray for me and my kids and everybody. And uh, she was she wasn't y'all knew that she wasn't well mentally, and that uh, she needed her medicine that was hard to get to her. And so um, I'm sure there'll be more details to come. But um, just keep our family in your prayers. And I'm gonna let Pastor Randall, my bishop, uh, he can pray. I get a microphone, he'll pray out. And if you have anything you want to share as well, uh, I appreciate it. Come on, let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. We praise your Lord for this time. God, we thank you, God, for showing up today, God, even in this service, even as your man's servant or undergoing what he's going through. God, you I have don't you want to get too religious here, but this is a story involving a pastor, so religion is going to get brought into it one way or the other. I'm not a very religious person. I have beliefs. I believe there's a higher power. But I was raised in the Christian church. My grandmother worked in the Christian church. So I was in church a lot. And I can honestly say I had no negative experiences in church. But when I look around today, one thing that sours my taste, one thing that puts a sour taste in my mouth and I feel like puts a sour taste in others, one thing that is driving people away from religion, and I'm not just talking about Christianity, any religion you can name, is that I feel like there's a lot of grifters, a lot of downright evil, shady people who are coming in almost hijacking these religions. It just really feels like a lot of the pastors and the preachers these days a lot of these religious leaders, a lot of them feel like they're shady people. And of course, you know, all of the stuff going on with some of them doing stuff with kids. I mean, I feel like a lot of people have been driven out of church by people like this John Paul fella. When I hear him, and I, I don't know this guy, I haven't heard any of his other sermons, but just listening to the way he talks, it just turns me off. And I think other people have those experiences as well. And I think there's a lot of people these days who do practice their religions, but they practice it from home. There's a lot of people who are comfortable reading their Bible at home or reading whatever religious text they want to at home and not involving themselves in the church because a lot of these churches have turned into like just shady churches that are no longer about community. It's about like grifting off of people. And these pastors are no longer about God. They're like about creating content and stuff. So this guy, regardless of anything going on with his wife, he already just does not seem like a great person to me. I'll just put that out there. But yeah, he just sits up there on the stage at church and confidently, nonchalantly tells his followers that his wife ended herself. Mind you, this supposedly happened like hours before he's in church giving this sermon. However, friends, family, and people close to Micah think that something else happened. Friends of the pastor's late second wife were taken aback over Micah Miller's death and urged officials to look into it deeply. This has to be at least looked into deeply. There's got to be some accountability here Ken Young says, because yeah, a tragic life was lost and it's not just as simple as mental health issues. Micah Miller's death comes as the county sheriff's office opens an investigation into the April 27th shooting. Officers are in the process of gathering information from people in South and North Carolina as part of their investigation into how Miller died. Micah Miller, age 30, was found to have suffered a fatal shot wound to the head at Lumber River State Park in Lumberton, North Carolina. 
As the pastor claims, he and his wife spent every night together for hours just talking and talking and talking. However, Micah Miller actually filed for divorce from her husband in October 2023, according to court records. The case was dismissed in February, but a few days later, John Paul Miller filed for separate support and maintenance, seeking financial support as the couple were still legally married. In April, Micah Miller also filed for separate support and maintenance with a hearing scheduled for June 5th. Her family is seeking justice for Micah as they claim a no contact order and a divorce was filed days before her death. So she filed for divorce days before her death. We are devastated and prayers are appreciated, said the family. There is a lot of talk already going on, so I want to set the record straight. Our sister Micah Miller passed away yesterday. Please do not listen to false stories being shared about her. Micah Miller's sister Savannah shared on Facebook, Micah was a God-fearing, joyful, loving woman who did not deserve the abuse she endured. If you hear anything about this from anyone other than her family, please question it. Reach out to her siblings or parents. Keep our family in your prayers. And if you have any information that needs to be shared, please contact one of us. Please respect us in this time and honor her memory with joy that she is no longer suffering. Listen, folks, the video of the sermon was crazy enough for me. That's all I had to see. But knowing these extra details, she was trying to leave him. Filing for divorce all of a sudden, all of a sudden, a couple of days later, she's no longer with us. And this guy is just at church acting as if nothing happened. But as crazy as all of these details are, as crazy as that video was, this story is much, much crazier. And I can assure you that. However, I don't have time to unpack all of this craziness in one video, so make sure you subscribe, make sure you ring that notification bell, because we are going to be digging all into this one, and boy oh boy, there's so much tea, there's so much information already floating out there that we all are going to have to dig through, we're going to have to react to it, because trust me, this rabbit hole runs extremely deep, and you have not seen anything yet. But we'll be talking about that in future videos. For now, let me know what you think about everything you've seen and heard down in the comments below. While you're down there, hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe, ring that notification bell, and I'll talk to you all soon in the next one.